Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be speaking about that idiot Professor Dave explains and his calculus video. So the next one I'm focusing on is the one called evaluating line integrals. So let's listen to a bit of the garbage that he talks about and I'll stop the video whenever it's time to do some corrections. So first of all he says that with parametric expression, with parametric equations, we can express ds in a form that we can calculate by hand. Well, that's absolute nonsense. Can be done with or without parametric equations. Okay, so let's continue. Yes, term integral as something that can actually calculate. Okay, so let's stop right there. It doesn't represent <clears throat> the infinitesimal space because there is no such thing as infinitesimal. It's actually garbage, which was dreamed up by Leibniz because he didn't actually understand why his methods worked. And so here's the proof. Let's go to my free ebook, which is an introduction to the new calculus, and go to page 134, okay? And here we see that <clears throat> we can take S as the distance formula. And we can consider <clears throat> that the distance formula is composed of these, the difference of these two ordinates, squared plus M plus N over K squared. And watch how beautifully this factors out. So we can bring them to the same denominator and we can take m plus n over k squared out and we're left with the m sub s mu sub s okay and what does this happen to be it happens to be the derivative for mu sub s and it gives you the arc length formula isn't that incredible did you study that yet in my free ebook or not i bet you haven't gotten there yet, but you should because um, it's, it's remarkable and it's amazing since you're actually taking an arithmetic mean, not the garbage that Dave is telling you about infinitesimal points. It's got nothing to do with that and it would never work with that because, I mean, if you can't have infinity, how can you have an infinitesimal? They're both ill-formed concepts. So um, Instead of watching this absolute rot, I suggest that you download my free ebook and see how these things are done without any ill-formed concepts. And uh, you will not regret downloading my ebook because it is the best ebook on the single variable new calculus. And it also shows you how you can relate a new calculus integral, which has no infinity or anything like that, to the mainstream definition. So for example, um, if you go back up here again, it, it tells you that this on the left-hand side is a new calculus arc length. And do you see any infinity there? Nope, nothing like that, right? On the right-hand side there, you see Leibniz and Riemannian form integral, okay? Which means you have to imagine that it is a limit of infinitely many rectangles. Okay, so Without uh, belaboring the point, this is what I wanted to bring to your attention here. And also, I wanted to explain to you that um, when you calculate an, a line integral, you're essentially scaling the x-axis. Okay, so how does that work? So let's suppose you have a curve like this on the xy plane. Okay, xy plane and you want to calculate a line integral. In fact, the, the definite integral is itself a line integral. So how do, actually, that's the other way around. <laughs> that's y and x. Okay, the line integral is, um, in, in fact, the definite integral is a line integral. So what does the definite integral say? It says uh, sum from a to b of, let's say, a function f of x, dx, or just for, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to leave uh, this derivative out and it's just going to be f of x, okay? So this can be written as, and in fact, there's something here that you don't see. 
this is inside there and you don't see it. It's uh, dy dx squared plus dx over dx squared, which is equal to root um, whatever this f prime of x is squared plus 1. Okay, and that is the arc length formula. So when you see that, uh, you, you basically are scaling the uh, integration axis to whatever is determined in this, uh, this arc length formula. And by the way, there is a very special relationship, which I'll explain sometime, that relates this to the circle. So <clears throat> the ancient Greeks, when they were looking at curves, they knew that the curve had tangent lines everywhere, right? And one of the concepts that they thought about was what would happen if you took a circle and you matched this tangent line to the curve. And then, of course, you, you moved the circle to the next tangent line and so on. And so um, uh, one of the results of that is that you end up getting this uh, this type of formula here, root r squared minus x squared, okay? And of course, uh, this gets replaced by f prime of x squared and r, which is a radius, by 1 squared. But uh, that is another topic that I haven't actually talked about and I might or might not deal with in a future video. So I haven't been able to produce videos the last one or two days, I think, because I haven't been feeling well. And I'll upload this. If you're not already a sub subscriber, become one. Uh, follow me on uh, academia.edu. Tell your friends about this. And if you're feeling generous, there's going to be a link in the details section where you can buy me a cup of coffee or a meal. So that's pretty much it. My name is John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.